All right, so a couple quick notes about what is going on with this week. Uh, your review books are in. I got an email when the email was actually working. Okay, your review books are in. So if you can tomorrow, if you're here tomorrow, okay, if you're here between 8 and 8.30, you can go get it from the bookstore. Otherwise, Miss Kennedy will be coming and bringing the books to the class and selling them in class. They're $20. If you're a cohort C, okay, and you're not coming into the school, if you're coming in tomorrow to take the test, obviously that's the best time to get it. Otherwise, uh, I guess contact the bookstore and contact Miss Kennedy and maybe you can figure out, she can have them for you, your parents can come grab them quick or something like that. Kind of like they did with the PSAT books or anything else. That's just for the co cohort C kids. Guys, whoever's mic that is, please turn it off. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, but the, the way to get it, it's weird with the bookstore. You can't just walk in. I think it's only open in the morning. Uh, it's not, I don't know my rule. <laughs> okay. She sent me an email saying you can get it tomorrow between 8 and 8 30. So if you can get here tomorrow, we'll grab them quick. They're 20 bucks. Okay. I'm going to be giving homework out of them. So you need to get them. Okay. The other good thing with them is they have lots of practice in them. So even if I don't give you something necessarily for homework, but you want to do it, and get practice in it that's good okay uh your quest your quest is due on friday okay i pushed it back we're supposed to be due today um you should be able to do most of it but like the graphing questions were the ones that you wouldn't have been able to do that's what we're going to do today so that today and thursday so it should make sense to you there so that's the one friday this friday you will have a quiz same as we always do okay and i think that's it your tests, okay? The grade that's there is now your official grade, okay? If you looked at it right after you took it, you would have freaked out because some of you had like 30s and 40s because it doesn't really grade the part twos and usually that when it tries to, it makes mistakes. So I have to go through all of them and grade it. So the grade that you have there now should be your grade. I had people who got hundreds. I had people who got 60s. Everything in between. You will have two more tests at least for the quarter. Yeah, so your grade is not stuck in stone. You can push it up, push it down. Okay, and you'll have lots of other things. If you should notice, I put a whole bunch of grades in over the weekend. Okay, it's because it was basically the first time I could actually get into power school in like two weeks. So hopefully that's not normally me. Usually I try to put stuff in right after it's done, but the system has been such a mess. I apologize. It's not really my fault, but I'm still apologizing. Okay, so that's the way that it has been. Cool. We good? Okay, now, we are still going to be talking about velocity today, like we've been doing. So you need to remember all the stuff that we have been talking about with velocity. But what we're going to do over the next couple of days is we're going to talk about how you take velocity, how you take an object that's actually moving, and you put that information on a graph so that somebody else can see. So it's not just a whole series of numbers, so you can actually visually represent the motion of an object on a graph. So we're going to talk about the graphing of motion. Mr. G, can you put the camera up? That better? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hey. Now, uh, those of you at home, if for any reason uh, the Signal cuts out. I'm recording this lesson on my phone and I'll be posting it on the YouTube channel later. So if for some reason it gets cut out, feel free to watch it there. You guys at home too, or here, you know, if you want to hear it again, just in case you miss anything, it'll be on the YouTube channel later. Okay, so like and subscribe. Okay, um, I've got like 63 subscribers. <laughs> Big deal. Anyway, so. If we're talking about graphing of motion, there's lots of different ways that we could do it. But this week, we're going to focus on two types of graphs. The two graphs we're going to focus on are going to be position versus time. That's the one we're going to do today. And then on Thursday, we're going to do velocity versus time.
Now, when we talk about graphs of motion, okay, we're not talking bar graphs. Please don't ever give me a bar graph, for God's sake. Okay, we're talking about line graphs, okay? You guys have done line graphs in chem, you've done them in earth science, in bio, in math, okay? So remember your basic rules of line graphs. So, we're gonna do this one first. Don't worry about this one later. Now, when we look at a position versus time graph, well, we've got your two variables here. Okay, you gotta put each one on the correct axis. Okay, we are going to put time on the x-axis. We measure time in physics most commonly in what unit? Second. Second, so we're gonna be talking about seconds. Okay, so we can do it to I know it's not to scale or exactly spaced apart, okay? It's not actual graph paper, it's just me hand drawing, okay? So we have time. Time is always gonna be on your x-axis. Always, 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 okay? Which leaves what here? Position, okay? So we're going to have position on the y-axis. Now, what the hell are we talking about position? Okay, we're talking about where something is located from you. Usually how far away it is. So what we're actually talking about is displacement. Just like we said, sometimes they'll use the word distance incorrectly. Same basic concept. Okay? Now, what's the unit that we're going to use to measure displacement or position? Then Meters. Meters. Okay. So your typical position versus time chart is going to look like this. Okay, position or displacement on one side, time here. Okay, and so we can just set it up. We'll do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Obviously, depending on what you're measuring and how far the thing is going and all that other fun stuff. Okay, cool. Everybody got this? We cool? Yes, we can Yeah. I can't see the graph at all. You can't see the graph at all? Oh, it just seems like a blank blackboard. Uh, is that the same problem the rest of you guys are having at home, or can you see the graph? We can see it. I can see it. Okay. I can see it. It's just pretty blurry. Okay. Uh, it's the best I can do. I don't have any darker chalk. I, it, I can see it on the video that I'm recording, so if you still have a hard time, just watch it again, because I can see it on my phone pretty easily. It might just be the camera on the iPad, sorry. Okay. Does that help? I don't know what else to do. I need like colored chalk. All right, so numbers don't matter, just the idea. As long as you can see the, the line, we're good. Okay, so when you're looking at this, you're always going to have this basic layout. Now, when we talk about a graph, we're going to draw lines on it. Whenever we draw lines, right, we care about the slope. Okay, we want to see our slope, right? What you did in math 14 million times, every time you had a line graph in math class, teacher said, find the slope, find the slope, to the point that you hate this word, okay? Now, when we're talking about the possible lines you could have, 
Okay, you could have a line that looks like that. You could have a line that looks like that. Right? You could have a line that looks like that. Like that. Or like that. Okay, so you could have a diagonal line that goes straight up like this, a diagonal line that goes straight down like this, horizontal line, or these. Each one of these represents a different type of slope. And it's really important that we remember what these types of slopes are because they're going to tell us about the different types of motion that we could have. So, if we have this one, a line like that, a diagonal line going up, what kind of slope is that? How would you describe the slope of this line? A direct relationship. It has a direct relationship. So what does that mean? How do you... Okay, but I didn't ask you about the type of relationship between the variables. You are correct. But I asked you about the slope of the line. When you describe the slope of a line, there's a couple terms you could use. It's linear. What does linear mean? What does it mean when you say something is linear? Ghostly voice from home. Say it again. It's constant. It's constant, right? It means the slope is constant, right? So you would say that this is a constant slope. If you go up by one, you go across by one. If you go across by two, you go up by two, right? The value never changes when you go from point to point. So you would say this is a constant slope. That's one part of it. What's the other part of it? It has to do with it being direct. Sort of. What's in the, well, if we look, what happens to the values as you go up this line? They become more and more what? Higher. Mm, not higher. Think about, you're talking about a coordinate system, right? As you go from here, you start at zero. Then you go to one, two, three. What kind of numbers are these on the integer scale? Positive. positive. As you go across this line, it becomes more and more positive. As you go all across this line, right, the line values here also become more and more Positive. So we would not only call it a constant slope, but we would call this a constant positive slope. A constant positive slope. As the values of the x get bigger, so do the values of the y. So we would call this a constant positive slope. Cool? Yes? At home, we cool? All right, that brings us to this line. Okay, now once again, it's a straight line going, right? So once again, we could say this is what kind of a slope? Constant. Constant. Take it a piece at a time. But if you look at this number, one of the axes, the value is going up, one of the axes, the value is going down. So we wouldn't say this is positive, we would say this is negative. negative. So this is a constant. Negative slope. Cool? Well, this one. What's the slope of this one? Horizontal line. Well, let's see. What's going on here? Okay? What values are increasing as you go along this line from the left to the right? The x values. The x values are getting bigger. Right? Cool. What about the y values? What are they doing? Staying the same. When we figure out slope, it's change in y over change in x. x yes? What's the change in y? Z. 
zero. So it'd be zero divided by some number. Zero divided by any number gives you what? Zero. zero. So what's the slope of this line? Zero. Not undefined. Zero divided by a number. Not a number divided by zero. Oh, zero slope. Zero slope. If the zero is in the denominator, that should get a divide. Okay. Everybody got these three? Cool? All right? Now, that brings us to these bottom two here. What's the difference between these two? And I didn't do it that great in this one. Until it was in it. There you go. What's the difference between these two and these three? They're not linear. These are nonlinear. Okay? But instead of saying they're nonlinear, we use the same term as we hear. We say they are non. What's the word that we use instead of linear? Exponential. Well, what's the word that we used here uh, instead of it? So instead of this, we would say it's non-constant or exponential. You could use that term too. Okay? So this is non-constant. And so is this one. Okay? But we have to tell them apart. As you go along the curve here, the x values increase. And so do the, yeah. so this would be non-constant, positive. positive. And this would be non-constant, non negative. Does everybody understand that? Yes? Yes. Cool? Okay. Now, keep these ideas in mind as we go into the actual graph. Okay, can I erase these? Everybody got them? We good? Now, if we look at this graph, we said we're going to talk about slope and lines, right? Well, Slope just tells us how much our y and x change, right? In fact, that's the formula that you originally learned to figure out slope, right? Delta y over delta x. Change of y over change of x. Or rise over run. Remember this formula? Seventh grade? Back when you were still cute little kids? Not the angry, you know teenagers that you are now. Okay? Now, delta y, when we talk about delta y, what are we talking about? What does that actually mean? Somebody change in y. Change in y. What does that mean? Other than these two who are answering everything. Somebody else? I mean, you've answered, but okay, go ahead. Y2 minus y1. Y2 minus y1. And at home, what's the bottom mean? What's delta x mean at home? Come on, somebody from home. What does this mean? X minus x1. Thank you. All right? I already got that. Nothing new. Not, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. Okay, now, that's basic when you're talking about slope on any graph out there. But when we look at this graph, we're not just talking about x values and y values as random numbers. They actually mean something. Okay? The y values are measured as what? What, the, what are the units that we're measuring the y values in? Come on, this is just read it off the chart, guys. This should not be hard. Mm -hmm. Meters. So we're talking about meters minus meters, yes? And what's on the bottom? Seconds minus seconds, which is going to give us meters on top and seconds on the bottom. Meters over seconds. What is that the unit for? Displacement. No, not displacement. Velocity. Velocity. So what does that mean? 
That means that on this graph, on a position versus time graph, the slope of any line tells you the what? The velocity of the athletes are traveling during that time. On a position versus time graph, the slope of any line segment on a position versus time graph, the slope of any line segment tells you the velocity, tells you the velocity of the object making that line segment. Tells you the velocity of the object making that line segment. So on a position versus time graph, the slope of any line segment tells you the velocity of the object making that line segment. Does that make sense? So when we look at these graphs, you can actually figure out how fast an object is going just by figuring out what the slope of a particular line is. Cool? Okay. Now, that's for this graph only. Remember we said the other one we're going to talk about is velocity versus time? It's not the same on that one. The slope of that line means something else. Okay, but on a position versus time graph, the slope of the line is equal to the velocity. Cool? Okay. Now, we're going to mark out the movement of an object, just to figure this out, see how it works. Okay? So, for this example, we're going to say that the starting position is this line right here on the board, and I am the object. Okay? So everybody sees this line right here. Yes? You can all see it at home. This is where I'm starting. Okay? And I'm going to move away from that line. Now, I'm going to mark this as the zero point, but I could start my measurement, I could say this is like a starting point, but I'm going to start over here, or over here, or back here. Okay? I do not have to start my graph at the origin. And by origin, I mean zero, zero. When you draw a position versus time graph, or any graph, you do not have to start it at the origin every single time. Does that make sense? Okay? Because you guys are going to be asked to draw various graphs. When you ladies and gentlemen or anybody, whatever you know, term you like to use, feel comfortable using, when you're asked to draw a graph, you start it based on the number they give you. So if they tell you the displacement is 5 to start, you start at 5. If they tell you the displacement is 0, you start at 0. Does that make sense? To make our lives easier, we'll start at zero, just for this. So, I'm going to start right here. At this commercial. And I'm going to move for two seconds. Okay? And in those two seconds, well, let's say I'm going to move for four seconds. In those four seconds, I'm going to move 20 meters. So we'll call this point A where I started, we'll call this point B. Cool? So in four seconds, I'm going to move 20 meters. Cool? Yes? Okay. What's my velocity? Well, how would I do that? Figure out the slope of that line. So the slope delta y over delta x cool substitute our values what's my y2 for this well let's see y2 would be here yes what is it 
20. 21. What's my y1? 0. Like that. 0 what? Over. What's my x2? 4. 4 what? What's my x1? Okay, so ultimately you get 20 divided by 4 meters per second. Okay, you do not leave it. I know a lot of times in math class they tell you to leave your slope as a fraction. Not in physics. In physics you do not leave your slope as a fraction. You have to do the math. Even if you get a decimal. What's 20 divided by 4? Hard math. Come on. Five what? Meters per second. Okay? Your speed is five meters per second. That's your speed. I asked you for your velocity. In order for me to give you your velocity, you have to tell me what? Direction. Direction. So, okay? What is my object doing? What am I doing? I'm moving at five meters per second. How? Hmm? You can't tell that. Because remember, you're not always going to have northeast, south, or west. What's another way that you can give direction? Can you use a plus sign? Can you use a plus sign, which is like what you were about to say. Okay, yeah. so I would be moving. What's plus mean? Mm -hmm. Positive, but in terms of motion, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Forward, right? I would be moving forward at five meters per second. Saying you're moving forward at five meters per second is giving a direction. So once again, I'm standing here. Right, ready the brake? Moving forward. My stupid walk, but it works. Right, does that make sense? So you should be able to tell me in words, in regular sentences, what's going on. Between at line segment AB, I would be moving forward at five meters per second at a constant speed. Did I speed up? Did I slow down? No, I started. And I walked. Yes, Daniel. Uh, wait, so would plus and minus be the only like, direction you move in? Yeah. Okay. Unless it specifically gives you some other, it tells you forward is north, backward, you know, something like that. Yeah. Cool? Yes, at home, we cool? All right. Now, let's say I draw another line segment. Line segment BC. Okay? What's going on at BC? What's the slope of that line? Zero slope. But instead of using the word slope, what are we going to use? Slope means what in this chart? In this diagram, in this graph? Slope is a synonym with what word? Hey! Velocity. So instead of saying zero slope, I could say zero, zero velocity. So we'd have zero Velocity. What the hell does that mean? Okay? In physics, when we talk about zero velocity, we use the term at rest. Okay? When we say that an object has zero velocity, we say it is at z it has it is at rest. Sorry. So in terms of describing my motion, I started out moving what? From A to B, what did I do? Keep going. Move forward. Keep the sentence going. Move forward at? Uh, five per at a? Constant speed. Constant speed. And then I got to this point and I did what? <sighs> cool. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah.
See the D. What did I do? Describe that velocity based on the slope alone. Sir? Um, velocity um, reversed. Not reversed. Use the right term. Yeah, I know what you're trying to say, but negative velocity. Negative velocity. Yeah. Okay. Negative velocity, which in this terms means you are going south. Not south. Backwards. Say love, man. You know the answer. Okay. So from C to D, I am moving backwards. Yes, ma'am. You could say positive velocity, yes. Okay, and then C to D would be negative velocity. Yes? Does everybody understand that? Now, does negative velocity mean I'm slowing down? No. no. All negative velocity means is that I am moving backwards. Okay? When I say negative velocity, and this is a problem, people hear that word and you automatically think slowing down. And in fact, if we figured out the slope, look at these two lines. Look at CD and look at AB. Which one's steeper? CD. Which means the slope of CD is actually going to be, number-wise, magnitude-wise, larger. So I'm actually moving faster backwards than I am forwards. Does that make sense? So AB would be... Hmm. Does that make sense? Okay, so I move forward until I get here, I hang out, and then I go back to where I started. Cool? Yes? Ah, crap, what did I just do? Here we have E. What the hell did I just do? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. What happened here? Let's describe the slope. Let's not think about what happened. Let's just describe the slope. What's going on with the slope in this line? Somebody at home, what's still going on in this slope right here? This downward diagonal slope. What's going on here? Somebody. Okay, somebody here. Really? It's still constant negative, right? Which means I'm still moving backwards. So I'm still going backwards, but what did I do? I went past where I started. I went into the negative, which is possible as long as there's no wall there, right? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about these graphs, we get stuck in thinking that you have to stay here. No. When you do motion graphs, you can be in quadrant one or quadrant four. What quadrants can't you be in? Why? Because you can't have negative time. If you can figure out how to make negative time, Nobel Prize, filthy stinking rich, don't forget your physics teacher. I can use the money. Okay? So, you can do this. So this would look like, if we were doing our motion, right? Forward. Hang out. Backward, 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 backward. Those of you that can't see me, I'm way over here by the door. <clears throat> so that's F. What did I do there? Forward again. I moved forward again to where? To my starting point. Hello. Yes? Cool. And what am I doing between F and G? What's the slope of FG? It's not constant and positive. It's not constant and positive, which means what am I doing? I'm starting to run forward. I'm accelerating forward. So FG would be positive acceleration. Acceleration in the forward direction. So if we do the full movement. What 
What point am I at? B. What point am I at? G. Going toward? Make sense? As stupid as I know I look in front of the room, jogging around like a little idiot, I hope that made sense. Yes? Cool? All right. Now, you have homework tonight. Ooh. It should pop up on your Google Classroom in about a minute or two. It's going to scare the crap out of you because when you open it, it's going to be like eight pages. But it's like one question per page because it's graphs. And there's one question, one page where they explain the answers to some of the questions so you can see if you get right. That's due on Thursday, not tomorrow. Okay? Cool? Yes? I'm glad to have performed for you today. Tip your waitresses on the way out. Have a good night, guys.